probably uh, let's start. I think we will start with our part, so then we have time. Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome again. My name is Erki Markus. I'm from Smiley. I'm the founder and the CEO and product owner of, uh, of uh, the software as a service, email service provider, etc. <laughs> God. God, uh, uh, root, holder not. of the root password, actually, no, this is uh, some other guy we have, but... All right, and my name is Tanel, and I'm the partner and marketing director, and this guy who's just doing all the talking, 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 talking. But about what we are talking today, as Erki said, there is like just one question, is email marketing dead or not? Is it still relevant in 2023? Since right. you know this technology is uh, more than 40 years old, mm -hmm. and older than you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really older than me. <laughs> older than probably most of our listeners today. Mm -hmm. So it has been the same since the beginning, mostly. Mostly. Yeah, there are some things that uh, people are doing differently. There are some new technolo technological advancements, but. Basically, it's the same protocol that we use so that was there 40 years ago. Yep. Yeah. So, let's start. Yeah, do we have a presentation also? Or just us in the screen? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. A few words about uh, Smiley. Uh, we founded this uh, small company, smallish. We are about 20 people. Founded about... Uh, in 2009 or so, <laughs> or something. So uh, 15 years uh, coming next year, uh, we are building uh, the software email marketing platform. Uh, we have about 18,000. Actually, it's uh, about 20,000 users uh, already, who send 150 million emails every month uh, to their subscribers, mostly business to customer segments, retail, e-commerce, etc. And uh, they send about, I think, 6,000 newsletter campaigns per month. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, w was something like that. We are uh, basically the only uh, service provider in, uh, in the Baltics uh, already uh, because uh, most of the competition has been bought up or... or, or uh, is Integrated not... to the, some other fancy system. Yeah. And why people are using Smiley so much here, we have 85% market share in Estonia, is because we are also an agency, we think with the client. So today we are also talking about the experience we have uh, uh, received from, uh, from uh, cooperation oh. with our clients. <laughs> yeah. uh, we see what they are doing, we see what works, we see what doesn't work. Since they are sending emails so much, <laughs> So, okay, we will get there. Is email marketing st still relevant? A um, couple of years ago, uh, I asked, uh, you know, like big audience, uh, what do you think? Is email marketing dead? And uh, most of the hands uh, were raised because uh, people, I think, agree that this like good old email marketing, spamming and uh, sending everything to everyone is uh, it's not no point doing it. Yeah. So this is dead. So I think this is what we can agree on also in the beginning. So uh, and actually, I'm seeing now also if I'm uh, hanging in LinkedIn and uh, reading all this in, uh, interesting stuff that also there is controversy that uh, there is one half who is talking that. Email marketing is, as you said, old thing already, 40 years, etc. And now there are TikTok, uh, whatever social media channels that they will take over. Mm -hmm. so, and, and then there is this half who is talking that no, if you are doing it well, you are doing it um, with a plan and strategy, then it's Anyway, we'll outlive all those other plans. Really? Really. <laughs> Actually, one of the reasons why we uh, thought that it is a good idea to talk about the relevancy of email marketing is 
my good friend Tunnel here is seeing in LinkedIn all the time people saying that email marketing is dead and he, he feels the urge to prove them that they are wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so a couple of numbers. A couple of numbers. Uh, we see from research that the number of email users has been steadily growing over the years. It is predicted to be growing uh, even more. Uh, by 2025, they say it's 4.6 billion people using uh, at least one email address. And uh, so this is the huge opportunity. If I could have all those contacts and I will send just one email, sell them something. And even if there are like, I don't know, 1% who will buy, mm -hmm. I will be a billionaire. Yeah, business idea. Yeah, absolutely good business idea. <laughs> Why are you sitting here? <laughs> <laughs> but the um, fact is that most of those people check their email inboxes uh, every day. Uh, 99%. And, uh, 1 .9. and the 1% is looking for their uh, inbox uh, password, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't remember the last numbers, but uh, I think it was 2.8 billion or so. There are Facebook users, uh, there yeah. are even less uh, other uh, social media platform users. So basically, this is your audience. It is growing uh, steadily, growing all the time, and it is the biggest of uh, them all. So if you have an email address of someone, uh, basically they can be your client. Uh, it, Either they use Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever. The, if they have email, they you can sell to them. And or you can talk to them. You don't have to sell all the time. Yeah. And of those people, what we said that 99.99 point mm -hmm. are checking their inbox every day. So uh, the study telling that approximately 50% of consumers check their email first thing in the morning. So, think about it. So, what you're doing in the morning, open your phone and checking the email. Wow! I go to the toilet. Uh, oh, okay, okay, lying, phone. lying, lying. I, I take my phone with me, of course. <clears throat> so, this is actually the huge opportunity. Of course. And uh, somewhere worse than the study, I, I don't also remember, but there was this um, this diagram which showed that uh, what is the first thing you're checking? Uh, social media, there was news. Google and, search. Yeah, I don't know what they are searching <laughs> first thing in the morning. <laughs> and then there was this uh, email and actually the email was the biggest. Yes, it was about 50% or so. Yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, to create a social media account, you need to have an email address anyway. Anyway, yeah, yeah. exactly. But uh, okay. yeah, okay, you can probably now you can do it through the phone number uh, only. Also, yeah, okay, maybe. But uh, com mm, compared uh, to if I am talking to you or uh, someone is calling me or they are sending me an SMS, email uh, is the next thing that mm -hmm. uh, triggers everyone. So if I get a Facebook notification in my phone, probably I have turned them off. I don't have an Instagram account, I don't have a TikTok account. So if you send me an email, it reaches me. If you want to sell me anything and it is well written, targeted email, we will uh, today uh, learn a lot about those topics, then you will probably get to me mm -hmm. by email. Yes, yeah, okay. the other thing, if I'm calling and then you're saying, don't sell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the worst. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it is uh, relevant if there are so many inboxes. Uh, the number wow. of emails sent every day is, is already also increasing. Yeah, this is actually the huge number, if you are thinking. 333 billion emails every day. Every day. Wow. Yeah, and this is not the spam that gets filtered out. About 90% of emails that are sent every day is like pure spam. We have, thankfully, really good uh, spam filters. So most of it will not reach any uh, inboxes anyway, but the rest is this 333 billion emails. So let's think about it this way. There are so many people 
but also there is a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So all of your competition is uh, doing the same as you are. Yeah. And that they are doing it probably better than you are. Nope. So it's really <laughs> hard, <laughs> hard to compete in this, uh, this field. So. And if you're thinking about those numbers, those are shown that will uh, have sent every day. So approximately 30% of marketers send the weekly emails and 25% uh, send uh, multiple times per month. So mm -hmm. let's say two, three. You can then calculate that actually this is the, the marketing emails have, uh, are is also the huge number according this huge probably it's most mostly smart yeah. yeah 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 I think probably most and, of it uh, is okay if you're thinking every day then how was that the nice joke about email marketing that uh, if I'm sending <laughs> one email to let's say to the 10,000 contacts and I will earn uh, 1,000 euro dollars, whatever money, then why not to send them 10 times per day and yeah, why? I will get like 10 times why more? Not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and then you think, why is not email marketing working? <laughs> yeah. So the, actually the statistic shows that about 50% of consumers want weekly emails. So don't send like 10 times per day. Actually, well, basically email marketing is the only field uh, you can say about everything. It depends. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, subject line to use, what content to use, how frequently to send, what to send. What time to yeah, send. Yeah, what time to send. So it depends, but basically, yes. What weekly emails we have seen from our clients work the best. Mm -hmm. uh, not too much complaints and, uh, well, the results are increasing. So, we have seen how many <coughs> mailboxes are, how many emails sent per day, and now, straight to the business. Yes. Who? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you. <coughs> okay, as we talked, that most of the emails that probably are, uh, have, uh, are sent uh, are marketing emails. And uh, we see from our research and from uh, the research done in, in the internet <laughs> 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 that 50% uh, of people uh, they get their urge to buy from marketing emails. This is the, the channel that drives most of the sales. You can do whatever else, but email is the most uh, effective way to drive new sales. And uh, about 59 to 60% of respondents say that marketing emails have influenced their purchases. So you can uh, educate your readers mm -hmm. by sending them relevant emails. They don't have to be like selling emails. You can send uh, like branding emails uh, with pretty pictures and stuff. We will today hear, is it uh, uh, good to send e uh, emails with pictures or not? I know. <coughs> it's uh, depends. It depends, yes, yeah. of course. And, but the most effective strategies uh, to drive the sales is uh, to uh, uh, use really good targeted uh, subscriber segmentation. 78% of uh, respondents said that this is the most effective way they have increased their sales. Okay. Message personalization, of course, obviously. So you, you don't say, send everything to everyone. Spammy, spam alert, dirt, dirt. <laughs> and uh, of course, email automation campaigns, uh, they are all above 70% of uh, respondents who said that this is a good thing to do. Yeah, because there are those uh, abandoned cart, yes. upsell, cross-sell, you don't buy, you don't, I, I have, haven't seen your know, like six months, mm -hmm. etc, etc, etc. So this is the thing I remember you presented uh, uh, the idea about automations in Lithuania and uh, you asked how many actually using these automations mm -hmm. and the reaction actually was not like everybody raised there. Uh, about f half. Uh, I think five years ago when I asked people how many, there, it was an event about e-commerce and I asked uh, e-shop holders how many of you are 
have set up at least one marketing automation workflow, I think it was like 20% or so. Okay. Like, uh, abandoned cart is uh, the least you have to do. Mm -hmm. This is like basic hygiene. But uh, yeah, reactivation campaigns, cross sells, upsells, uh, whatever. Uh, you, you have to set it up only once, see how it works, improve, learn from uh, your mistakes, you learn what, what your competition is doing, and it starts working for you 24 seven. And as we see from the research, it works. 71% mm -hmm. of respondents say that marketing automation campaigns uh, work for them really good. Yeah. And yeah, sorry. No, nothing. <laughs> of course, uh, what is also uh, important to keep in mind is, uh, is uh, other optimizations, like technical uh, aspects. Uh, you don't, cannot send broken HTML, uh, subject line uh, optimizations, because subject line and the sender are the only things that can trigger the open of the email. Mm -hmm. If you are sending July newsletter, August newsletter, September newsletter uh, to everyone, but I have five uh, more uh, newsletters in the inbox uh, sitting <laughs> besides yours. But, I will not open yours. <laughs> but if I'm sending the June newsletter in December, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's intriguing. <laughs> yeah, intriguing. <laughs> Uh, all right, so personalization works. Yep. Mm, mobile devices. We see from our clients uh, that during the, I think, last 10 years or so, uh, the mod mobile ad adoption has been increasing steadily, but not like really fast. So today uh, we see that about 40, yeah, nine, <laughs> sorry, 41% of emails are opened only in mobile mm -hmm. and uh, 39 on desktop there is uh, where, where is the <laughs> where is the missing part <laughs> probably they have uh, been opened uh, on both devices but uh, we see that the mobile is the king already yeah and actually what you said in the last slide that you have to optimize and you have to think so if you're thinking how much people are reading their emails from mobile so you, you just can't do extremely long emails mm -hmm. because if you are thinking also about this mobile adaptation where the, you have like three products and they are moving, that you will see them mm -hmm. like in the picture. So your email is going to be like literally one kilometer long and you are just scrolling and scrolling yeah, and yeah, scrolling yeah. and scrolling. So, yeah, this is, this is the trend, but you have to think how to go with this trend. Yeah, and as we uh, talked at the beginning of the presentation that uh, most of the communications outside offline world uh, happens already anyway in the mobile. Mm -hmm. You call me, you send an SMS, and if you send me an email, they are basically on the same level, so you will get to me uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is also important. I will not go to the office, open my uh, big old computer and uh, open my Outlook <laughs> Explorer <laughs> and then I see your email. I will see it right away if you yeah. send it to me. <laughs> okay, but Whoa. we have a few uh, directions uh, to talk about. So, and probably all of those who are speaking after us mm -hmm. will dig deeper. We, we just giving the hint what this... What we are seeing are the new market trends. Yeah, yeah but probably those are like what we have seen like last five years or, or every year in the January someone talks that what are the new trends? Personalization, segmentation, automation, and then goes to the next year and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's year, year, year over year. year. Oh, so, yeah. coming to segmentation and personalization. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this has been a trend already a number of years. Uh, but I think the problem with this is we talk about this. The internet talks about this. All of the like influencers talk about this. Mm -hmm. It is really important to personalize, segment, etc., etc. But uh, if you split your list 
to, for example, languages, okay. Estonian, English, Russian, whatever, Polish. Uh, it's a nice way to start, mm -hmm. but if that's it, then, uh, well, okay. then your then competition will like do the same soon, and uh, y you will not uh, be any anything special in there. All right, let's take the next step. You will split it uh, to the gender mm -hmm. for males and females. You are a car salesman, and say, oh, okay, you sell red cars to uh, women and uh, black uh, muscle cars to men, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, we got already like two language <laughs> and gender. So uh, let's add something more. Let's add uh, age. Yes, of course. Let's add uh, seasonality. Location. Yeah, location, seasonality. Uh, you, you can sell uh, different uh, things in summer, in winter. Mm -hmm. to different kind of people. Okay. Right? Uh, Shopping patterns. If you are buying <coughs> expensive things regularly, if you are buying uh, not so expensive things. But if we are talking about uh, how it was in our uh, presentation slide, micro-segmentation, mm -hmm. so then we have deep, even more deeper. Basically, what this um, slide says is uh, like the trend where everybody should go is uh, as precise segments as possible. For, for example, you, you might have like five people in one segment. If they drive your sales with every email, mm -hmm. that every targeted and uh, personalized email that you send them, this is a nice segment to have. You, you might have like one big segmentation, a segment uh, of the rest. <laughs> and, and one where you have this uh, five people and this will drive you all your money. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you can send them out by uh, your uh, Outlook also. <laughs> but yeah, actually this is like that, if, if you can get that, uh, it's like, let's, let's take Erki here. Mm -hmm. Age, uh, religion, mm, I have everything. Likes, what type of car he drives, what kind of clothes he likes, what kind of food he likes. If I am a cat person or a dog person, yeah, how many and, children and, I have. And if, if, if you can get all this information, so then you can, I don't know, sell him. You, you know that probably in the beginning of summer he will buy a pink socks. That matches my new car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. So, so this is like you can go so deep with this segmentation. Yeah, but where do you get the data? Uh, you can ask. Yeah, I wanted to say you can ask. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay, you can ask, but what is like the other E? You can look uh, your purchase history. Of course. Yeah, you can you can uh, see the patterns that uh, your customers are are in. Like, mm. yeah, for example, what they are buying. If they uh, live in uh, uh, some kind of location where there are uh, people like them, uh, yeah, their age, etc. It's it's really okay to ask from people mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if uh, we we have seen if people know that you use this information. Uh, to, to send them better targeted emails, they are more than willing to give you the information. You can uh, create a, a campaign for this, uh, please update your profile, or you can just add some kind of like small buttons inside the email that say, I, I am a cat person, I'm a dog person, and if they click on this, you will put a special tag on the person and it will go to this segment where you, you have this information about them. So. Basically, the more you have, the better uh, segmented and targeted information you can uh, use uh -huh. to send more relevant emails. And as we talked about, the more relevant the emails are, the better they work. Uh -huh. They stand up from the inbox compared to your competition. And uh, yeah, they buy probably from you, not from, uh, from your comp competitors. So, and uh, we got all this data. Mm -hmm. We got those 10 or, I don't know, 20 or more uh, segments. And now let's go to the personalization called like hyper, I don't know, super duper hyper, <laughs> uh, ultimate universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so means that uh, 
As Erki said a couple of slides before, it was like, hello, Erki, let's start with this typo. This mm -hmm. is the small step. If I'm saying you, hello, Erki, this is already triggering a little bit more emotions. But okay, if you are sending like, hello, Erki, ten, yeah. <laughs> 10 times, you're probably got boring. Yeah, okay. Jesus, this American point. style marketing, I don't like this. <laughs> But yeah, one-to-one -one personalization. Some of our clients are already doing this uh, every day. They have learned from uh, the, their clients what they like and what the clients like their clients like. <laughs> Ooh, <deep>. Inception. <laughs> so basically, like-minded clients are put together in some kind of segment mm -hmm. segments, and they have sent are sent one-to-one -one targeted uh, emails. So basically, if I uh, get the one type of milk, you will get another type of milk because we prefer uh, different types mm -hmm. of milks uh, and, and other uh, 19 products in the email are also personalized according to my preferences. And if I get this email on time, when I go usually and shop in this uh, shop, <laughs> then we have seen that those emails work at least a couple of times better than mm -hmm. the usual newsletters. Uh, are the people are sending like regularly so i would say, say this again one-to-one -one personalized emails we have seen from our clients work up to five to six times better money wise they uh -huh. bring in more revenue than like just newsletters you can send out every day yeah because actually the the click rates and the open rates if we are looking it's it's staying the same yeah but yeah as Elke said that actually this is what drives the money. Mm -hmm. If you have even put for the for the first like step to take uh, more money, we have seen it's like giving back during probably already like I don't know two or three months, and, mm -hmm. and this is shows how well it works. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now coming to automation, we have already touched about talked about this a little yeah. bit. But, this was um, like the abandoned cart. Yeah, must be. For example, abandoned cart for e-shops must be, but uh, also for service providers or whatever car salesmen, there are a lot of opportunities to automate. You, the, there are like um, seasons or patterns in every business mm -hmm. where uh, they come back. If you buy a vacuum cleaner, you will uh, buy those vacuum cleaner bags every three months. If you buy a table. Probably it breaks every five years, but you will buy other stuff uh, that uh, sits next to this table, <laughs> like a couch or, or, or uh, I don't know, cupboard. Yeah, and if, if, you, are, if you go to the uh, hairdresser, like you did, like then like probably did. they will ask you to come back uh, next month. But actually, I didn't see that they were, uh, any of them like no. sent me just... The, if, if you are thinking there is... There is probably the pattern I'm going like once in a month or, or once in a, <clears throat> in a three weeks. But, and then it's like, uh, okay, I'm driving there and maybe I go this time there and the next time there. And uh, okay, I, I didn't see that my hairdresser is free now, so I choose something else. But if they are sending like, yo, dude, Probably your hair is already too long <laughs> and you look like Click some here, hippie. Click here to book an appointment yeah. and done. People are lazy. If you make them uh, like uh, the options are uh -huh. easier, they will take it. Actually, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, we all talked here about the abandoned car, mm -hmm. but what is the like most simple and uh, most working automation, what well, actually lots of businesses are failing. Besides abandoned cart. Yeah. I think welcome series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you start working together with some business, you probably like sign up or, or make a contract. It's really okay to send them a welcome email series about benefits, uh, about how to log into whatever, if you have some kind of place, uh, how to take advantage of everything uh, and uh, maybe ask 
them about if they are willing to join your newsletter of, about good offers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, this is basically the most failed thing, as you asked, <laughs> that that, that uh, businesses are, are not doing. Yeah. If I see someone coming to my restaurant like day to day, but I don't know their name, I don't know where they live, I should ask uh, all of my like regular customers their uh, email addresses so I can at least send them, as you said, uh, your hairdresser was not working that day. Uh, okay, if she got ill, then I don't know if it's a good idea to send an email, but... <laughs> Yeah, but, but if but my car company is uh, closed, uh, I, it's good to get an email about this if I have been scheduled an appointment. Yeah, today. exactly. Yeah. All, all those small things when you are engaging the logic that uh, I'm caring. Mm -hmm. So when I'm thinking with you. Mm -hmm. Together. Yeah. So do you want to come back to need this one, this thing or, or that thing because you have already bought it or I know that maybe you have to bought it because I don't know your cats and, and it's like going to end and, and the benefit is uh, you earn more money thanks yeah. to this we have seen uh, up to three times four times more money if you have set up a good welcome series uh, email automation we have seen the same if uh, you have set up abandoned card automation reactivation campaigns uh, help you get people back mm -hmm. if they have forgotten about you. They uh, help to clean the list. If they will not come back after a number of emails, you can just erase them from their database. Your uh, numbers will get better, well, opens and clicks, etc. because uh, email inbox providers uh, see, say they see that you are not sending so much spam mm -hmm. that is not interested. Okay, and of course, oh. chat. GPT, as you but, uh, already mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> and the mid journey and all those things. So probably the next the Masters of Email Marketing... Will in, be about AI. You no. Know, <laughs> will, will be created by AI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> AI takes over Skynet. And, and uh, <laughs> we are just not sitting here, some robot talking like... <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Yeah. <laughs> AI will talk a little bit better, I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but actually, uh, ChatGPT4 uh, came out, I think it was a week or two ago. Two, two, two weeks ago yeah. or something. We see already uh, in our work, in our com competitors or cooperation partners' work, so much benefits, uh, easing uh, smaller and easier tasks mm -hmm. that uh, like are inconvenient for people like writing long text, uh, researching for information, uh, like fact checking, whatever, uh, even translating uh, in some cases, it's uh -huh. okay. So uh, as it said in the, in the slide, AI will automate and enhance a lot of parts in email planning and management also. Uh, we are uh, actually building an AI inside the Smiley system ourselves. It is not uh, that GDP? GDP? Yeah, yeah. But, but it will this, take over anyway. This AI will take over the thinking about what products to send to what people. So mm -hmm. This one-to-one -one personalization thing. This is also artificial intelligence. You, you don't have to uh, think about every client what to send them. AI will do do this. So yeah, this this is this is the future. And, and probably the the patterns, uh, how people are reacting, what time they're reacting. Uh, how all those bounces, uh, why they are, I don't know, unsubscribing mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. So the analytics and all this with the, um, combined with them go, will be much, much more detailed and better. Yeah. Okay, so Donald, what? Oh, sorry. Oh. The yeah. interactive medium, of course. Uh, but we, we, since we said email is old technology, older than you, uh, it has been the same since the beginning. We still see some hints about interactivity that uh, people like more. Yeah, but this is this is like uh, 
the probably this is this uh, AMP script what you are talking about. AMP emails in uh, Gmail, right? Yeah. yeah, and but this is also only uh, with one inbox mm -hmm. provider where it works. Yeah. So and you have to go actually through huge amount of uh, certification, etc., etc., to to get it um, working like well. So. I agree with you. Probably this AMP will not uh, like get so much traction. It doesn't matter that we see that at least uh, here in the Baltics and in Scandinavia area, about 60% of traffic goes to Gmail already. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that. Uh, Apple is uh, one of the biggest players in uh, Northern America and uh, there are a lot of local uh, email inboxes uh, in Russia, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in Eastern Europe, exactly. in, in Asia. And, yeah, yeah, and because th there are like huge number probably who are using some different yeah. uh, mailboxes. So, yeah, but, but anyway, you can do it with a... Um, G How it's in English? GIF? Jiff, <laughs> yes. So, and, and add something more like this, but actually we don't know what, what's going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, we see that um, people like fancy images, uh, beautiful images, and if you have, uh, uh, like for a branding email, it's really okay to send uh, image, uh, emails with animations, uh, with video uh, previews, uh -huh. with shopping cart previews, uh, you cannot sell basically anything without images. So email is a rich interactive medium, basically a small web page. Yeah. And if you can uh, do have a, like a really good user experience inside the email, uh, like a clear message, uh -huh. clear call to action, uh, nice visually appealing, then it works better than plain old text. Or you have to write that. Uh, <clears throat> now you can buy those nice pink uh, yeah, yeah. boots with uh, three paragraphs of uh, description about the uh, <laughs> nice <laughs> pink boots. Okay. So, oh, wow, wow, wow! Our time is over. We have to uh, be fast. Is it dead? Is it dead? Is I, it dead? I think it it's dead? not dead, and I think it's more relevant. Or also in 2023 and going forward, if you do it right, you mm -hmm. are not spamming, mm -hmm. you are cleaning your lists, mm -hmm. you do all those segmentations and automations and okay. personalizations, hyper personalizations, because email marketing has its advantages uh, compared to any other marketing uh, channel you might have. You, you get more attention, people uh, like they uh, opt in to marketing emails, they they think it's okay to get them there, not in, for example, Facebook Messenger or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you control who sees what. Uh, there is no algorithm for that. Uh, you can test really easily. You can. Uh, you have a really high return of investment because it doesn't cost, cost basically anything. Only mm -hmm. the email marketing service provider fee and your own labor. <laughs> and it belongs to you. This is one of the unique features of uh, your email list. So we every day suggest to our clients and in our webinars to start collecting email addresses from day one because this is a pot of gold. Even if uh, you lose your whatever Facebook page or Instagram will be shut down or, or that you will have your email list, you can move it uh, between service providers. And if you have uh, the people have agreed to get marketing newsletters from you, mm -hmm. This will drive your sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, we will talk about those topics regularly. We will invite uh, uh, invite people to uh, participate on our webinars. Also, masters of uh, uh, email marketing, probably in the fall. Yeah, this one with the AI thing. We, and uh, twenty four hours. <laughs> twenty four hours. <laughs> And uh, do we have any questions? I, yeah, I see we have, we have any questions, uh, some questions. Is it possible to get the source for the stats or studies? Yeah, yes. okay, we will add this to our presentation slide and when you are, we are sending it, you will, you will get. 
Where is the evidence that long-form emails do not work when recipient engages on mobile devices? Generalizing like that has never been good advice. Okay, maybe we we were like to uh, like general, general, generic. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, I agree. Yeah, but but actually, we we have seen uh, even in our clients, we have tested like. Uh, what's work better starting with uh, 56 mm -hmm. products in the email and going down and down and down up to 20 or 16 and exactly when <clears throat> you are using the mobile phone you are seeing if you are looking at the statistics between the desktop and the mobile phone mm -hmm. then in desktop it's also increasing but in mobile it's increasing more rapidly mm -hmm. if they De are decreasing yeah the so number of yeah. clicks yeah we have seen like heat maps about this uh, and since in mobile devices all the content is squeezed and it gets like three times longer than it is on the desktop device people for really long emails we have seen on the heat maps uh, on our clients and uh, research done in the internet that the footer links get clicks but not as much if the email is a lot shorter. So it is a generalization. Of course, we understand uh, it is not like a rule of thumb. Uh, it depends on your uh, uh, business uh, and uh, your, your users, your subscribers. But uh, this is what we have seen on our clients, yeah. clients basically. Yeah. And the question about segmentation and personalization in business to business emails. We do not have so many business to business customers. But but anyway, in the in the business to business, there is you can you can do it even more specific. Yes. Because <clears throat> if you are thinking uh, B two B, let's say <clears throat> uh, you are selling a service or or some materials mm -hmm. or or some products, then you probably know uh, from, references. From 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 this company where you want to send it okay i won't send it to the marketing people mm -hmm. or the buying department or this is goes to the bookie well, basic segmentation yeah so yeah. so you can do it there like uh, much better and this is works differently better when if you're sending like just info at company .com. yeah yeah of course well this is a uh, like unsolicited or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> solicited uh, email yeah exactly but uh, we have some use cases with uh, some of the clients we uh, work together in business to business uh, segment and uh, we see that uh, com by combining marketing and sales uh, you get the best results mm -hmm. because in business to business it's a really important part also to uh, have a sales department or a sales software like pipe drive or, or sales or something like that and uh, integrating th those two platforms together uh, you can get all the information that is important in sales into marketing for example yeah, they did a call talked about this product uh, this information goes to uh, marketing and uh, person will uh, be added to some kind of segment mm -hmm. that uh, will get the uh, targeted email uh, based on their interest and vice versa if they open some kind of emails in if they click on some kind of links then this information is pu pushed back into sales and uh, sales people call or write them uh, about uh, asking about uh, hmm, how we can go forward with this mm -hmm. so this has been working really really well in, in business to business all right. All right. We don't have any more questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, and let's move on.